Humming away next to me, actually it's quite a pleasant hum, is the Lee Time 3000 watt inverter charger. This takes 12 volts from lithium iron phosphate batteries in this case and converts it into 120 volts AC to run appliances like refrigerators and even space heaters and air conditioning, especially like in our case for off-grid living. So I'm making a review of this after I've used it for an entire week to power our living situation continuously. It has not shut off for that entire week except for for me to test you know voltage somewhere or do a maintenance thing for a few minutes here and there and uh, so far I highly dislike it so stay tuned for all the reasons why I highly dislike it uh, but first uh, let me let me just say a few positive things about it uh, it actually seems to be well made for the price I think it was five hundred and fifty dollars for this unit you know, it's solidly built, it's very heavy, got a nice big transformer. It's a low frequency inverter. They don't specify that on their website, I don't know why, but low frequency inverters are great for surge capacity, like running inductive loads like air conditioning with big electric motors in them. It keeps the, the electronics, the MOSFETs, separate from the back EMF and the high surge loads from electric motors and, uh, well, anything else that has high surge loads in back EMF. Uh, all I can think of are electric motors right now. But it's just great for that. Oh, running circular saws, running chop saws, running table saws, anything like that that would normally dim the lights in your house when you turn it on, these are great for. But what it is not great for so far is, uh, well, we'll start with the features that don't work right. So when I connect this to the generator, let me show you how I have this wired up. So here's there's a panel on the front here with lugs. You wire in your input and output. I've got mine wired to camper plugs because we're living in a camper out here in the woods. So this is a normal, oh, I'm gonna unplug the power to my house for a second, but this is a normal camper plug. Oh, that's actually coming from the generator, whatever. So that normal camper plugs wired directly into this thing. And that's how we have our power going and out. Now, when I fired up the generator for the first time and had the inverter plugged in and it got, this is an inverter generator, by the way, nice clean power. It's not like there was a problem with the quality of the power. So this is getting nice clean power from an inverter generator. It would not charge the batteries until I fiddled with the dip switches over here. So if you get one of these and you're desperate to have it charge your batteries, there's something really strange about this, some kind of design defect that the company denies exists where if you do not mess with a dip switch over here and like maybe you're like waking up the brain in it, the computer or something, it will not charge your batteries. It, will, it won't even try to charge the batteries. It'll pass the AC on onto your living quarters. No, wait, it didn't do that. Sorry, it won't even pass the AC onto your living quarters. That's right, I was really annoyed. It, it, the charging light will come on, it will keep using the inverter to supply whatever load you're supplying, and it won't switch or anything. But when you fiddle with these dip switches on the back, like I said, it like wakes up the computer in it, and it goes, oh, hey! I'm awake now, there's power coming in. And then, it's, then it'll switch over to your generator or your grid power and charge the batteries and supply your load. So that is really annoying. So if you get this and it's not automatically switching over and charging your batteries, just take one of the dip switches on the back and switch it back and forth. Here, come here and show them the dip switches on the back that control everything. And I'm gonna get out the card that shows the details on what they do. So there's three dip switches here. Switch number one uh, switches between grid first or inverter battery priority. So what that means is that if you set it to grid first, when you connect to the grid or fire up your generator, this inverter will automatically start charging your batteries and switch all your loads to the grid. And if you switch, switch it to the other way, it will run the inverter even if there's a grid or generator until the batteries are completely dead and then it will switch over to the input power from the grid or the generator, whatever you have hooked up. The second switch is kind of related to power quality, AC input range. So this is re actually really great if you're running a generator for off-grid, I will say that. If you set the dip switch to 100 to 127 volts, that's great for grid power. If you set it to 90 to 135 volts AC, that's great for the amount of variability there can be in generator power. Even though I'm using an inverter generator, so I don't have that problem, but I still keep it set to 90 to 135 volts AC because I want to make darn sure that when I have the generator fired up, this thing keeps using the generator. 
And then the next one is the load sensing interval. If you look here on the top, there's a, there's a thing that says eco mode. Normal mode, the inverter stays on constantly. If you switch it to eco mode, it will look for a load every 30 seconds or five seconds, depending on what that uh, switch is set to. And if it finds a load that is more than, I think it's 60 watts. I, I read the owner's manual, I'm pretty sure it's 60 watts. It will automatically fire the inverter up to full power, which brings us to our next downside on this, which is uh, that this thing, when the inverter is on, draws 60 watts of power constantly. I Before I put this in, I had a cheap Harbor Freight inverter in here, and that thing drew like 15 or 20 watts, depending on the battery voltage, and, <laughs> constantly. So this thing draws three times the power of a high-frequency inverter. T crazy, crazy stuff. So this thing is constantly drawing 60 watts from the batteries. You need like a couple hundred watts of solar to keep up with that keeping your batteries charged to make up for what this generator is pulling it's not great it's very bad if you're living off grid like me like when i hooked this thing up the first week and the first couple days i'm like wow the batteries are going dead so much faster than they used to not that our battery setup is whiz bang fancy or anything but they lasted a lot longer on this crappy harbor freight gener generator inverter we used to have in here so io consumption is a real killer but also double down on how awful this thing is for being off grid. The efficiency is 88%. That doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but until like you're trying to count every single watt because you're off grid and you only have 1200 watts of solar in our case, and then that really matters. That Harbor Freight inverter was 95% efficient. It was the Jupiter Pure Sine Wave. Uh, Maybe I'll make a video on that if there's enough requests in the comments, let me know. But I really wanted this for the ability to fire up the generator and replenish the batteries on cloudy days because that was the, the thing that we were missing, was the ability to recharge our batteries on cloudy days because it is so terrible to just leave a generator running all the time so that you don't have to go out and start it every time you want to run something for that convenience factor. Okay, I mean, you don't have to leave it running all the time for the convenience, but hey, I want to be lazy. I don't want to think about things too much. I want to plug stuff in and have it work. So this is a much better solution in that way because I wanted to be able to fire up a generator and have the batteries charge. And when the batteries are charged, shut the generator off. And that's way more efficient too. If your generator's just running with no load on it, all that gas that's being burned, it's being wasted. All that gas is being wasted if there's no load on it. So you fire this thing up, you, it's, it's like a hybrid car, you know? You run the engine in the hybrid car only when the batteries need charge or when you need a little extra power to get up the hill. That's, what, that's basically the setup we got going on here when the solar ain't working right. We fire up the generator, feed a thousand watts of power into the bat in this, excuse me, <coughs> into the batteries, and uh, you know, we got another 20, yeah, 2,500 watts to play with to run loads in our living quarters. And it has eco mode, so it idles the engine down and revs it up appropriately based on the load. Basically, having no load on a generator is a really bad idea for fuel efficiency. But getting back to this inverter, the charger is 45 amps, and that works great. The charger actually works great once you get it to work by waking up the brain, like I said earlier, which is really annoying. So, anyways, to, to wrap this thing up, this thing seems solidly built. It weighs like 50 pounds. It's very heavy, and... Uh, and that's good, but the features don't quite work right. There's something wrong with the computer in this thing. Like I said, you have to wake it up. Once you wake it up, it works. But if you lose, if you turn this thing off completely, it's not just if you lose battery power. If you turn it off completely like I just did, I turned the inverter circuit off and everything. You, 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 when you turn it on and you try to bring grid power in, I don't know why I turned both switches on. You don't have to. You can only turn one or the other off. It'll. This is the remote control panel it comes with. That's kind of neat. It gives you the percentage load on the generator and everything. But if you want this thing to charge your batteries and pass the AC through to your load, now you got to come down here and flip a dip switch back and forth and like wake up the brain in it again. It's not just if it loses battery power. If that was the case, I wouldn't be as upset about it because it's very rare you lose battery power. But... You know, if I come out here and turn this thing off to service something, I got to remember that it's finicky. Um, if you can see past that, what this thing would be good for, 
would be for like backing up something in your house that uses 3000 watts of power that can never shut off. Maybe like a sump pump or something. I could see it being useful for that as long as uh, you leave it in the on normal mode and you use it like a UPS with like a 200 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. But there's better options on the market, I'm sure. I haven't seen them yet that don't have these issues, so I would not pick this. But maybe there's like a sale on it and you get it for like half off or something or you know, get it for like two, 300 bucks, then it might be worth it. But otherwise, I would avoid this, this lead time charger inverter. It had issues right out of the box. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate any of the issues it has. And the inefficiencies are terrible for off-grid use. And there's just more efficient inver inverters out there. I mean, Victron makes low frequency inverters if you have to run inductive loads. So... You know, get it's got to cost a lot more money, but if you have big inductive loads to run like some pumps and stuff and you're doing it off solar, then I, you know, I would go with one of those companies. And otherwise, uh, I'm going to go back to high frequency inverters because I don't have that kind of cash. I'm just going to hope that the, you know, 1500 watt air conditioner really isn't that big a load to blow the MOSFETs out of high frequency inverters. This was a really bad idea. So, yeah, don't buy this. Get another brand if you have to have low frequency inverters. And maybe in the future, I'll make more reviews about inverters and batteries as I'm building my system out here off grid. Thank you all so much for watching and I really appreciate your time. I know I did a lot of talking in this video. I really hope you learned something. Bye-bye.